Hello and welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black here with all the context you need to totally rock this week's Come Follow Me readings without having to worry about all the comprehension and context. This week we are studying Matthew chapters 11 and 12 and Luke chapter 11. Only three chapters, that's it. Seems like a pretty light week compared to some of the readings we've had recently. And to add on to that, a lot of the stories that we're studying this week are repeat stories. Not all of them, but you'll see, you'll notice a lot of repeats. So I think this is kind of a good week. It's like a little breather week. Let's repeat some of this stuff. Let's really double down and focus on what we're, what we're reading as we kind of move into the next part of Jesus's ministry here. You'll notice as we repeat some of these stories, there's a lot of focus on what Jesus is teaching. Now, he's not like sitting down and giving a big sermon in these chapters, right? It's not like the Sermon on the Mount where we're like, yes, study this talk, it's amazing. But instead, like the way that Jesus teaches most of the time is, okay, the Pharisees are coming to criticize him. And so he teaches as he's rebuking them, right? Or he performs a little miracle and then he's teaching that person. And sometimes he is gathering his disciples and he's just teaching a little bit and then they move on with this, right? Um, so look for those little moments of teaching throughout the three chapters this week because Jesus is showing by example, but he is also using his words to teach and to explain and to expound and to rebuke. So pay attention to what he's using his actual words to do as well because I think there's some really good stuff in these chapters this week in particular. Now, let's talk about where we are in the scope of the New Testament. So as I mentioned last week in last week's video, we're using Matthew as the book that we're kind of following as we go through the New Testament. And that tracks for this week. We're moving on to the next two chapters, Matthew 11 and Matthew 12. Now, the focus of these chapters, like I said, it's on like little miracles that Jesus is doing and the informal teaching moments. And so, Luke 11 is the one that fits best with this chapter. Um, in fact, Luke 11 fits perfectly with Matthew 11 and 12. So that's why we're studying this this week, um, because that means we skipped Luke chapter 10 and we skipped Luke chapter 8 last week. So now we have 8 and 10 in Luke to make up. We will make it up at some point in the very soon future, don't worry. Um, but just keep that in mind. Luke 8 and Luke 10, we've now skipped. Um, the reason we're skipping Luke 10 is because it actually covers the parable of the Good Samaritan, and that fits in better with a different week with Matthew. Um, so, because it's an amazing parable, I'm excited for that week. But that's why we're skipping forward to Luke 11 this week. It's gonna be a great week filled with lots of these little teaching moments. Now, when we have these weeks, or just readings in general, when we have a whole bunch of repeat material, it can be easy to disengage mentally, right? And be like, I, I've already read this. I already did the work on that. I'm good, right? Um, but I think there's so much beauty and power in finding something new every time we read it. Like if I'm gonna read a story three times from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, I'm gonna learn three things from it every time, right? Like I'm gonna learn a new thing each time because I just think there's so much value in it. So a few ideas can be as you're reading, think about the perspective of the author, right? If you have my study guide, look at that Four Gospels deep dive at the beginning. Um, if you don't, I have other resources on Instagram that might be helpful to you, but thinking of Matthew and, and how is he prophesying to the Jews and what does, and, and teaching the Jews and what does that look like? And think of Luke as he's talking to the Gentiles and what emphasis is he making? And Mark, what details is he including as well? I think that's really important, but also our lives constantly change. The needs that you even had a week ago are different, maybe very different from the needs you have now. Um, and then, so inviting the spirit to just point out like, what do you need to know from the story this week? That is a super powerful technique. But then another technique is sometimes I read a story and I'm like, that's, that's the one thing I'm learning from it. And I read it again and it's that same thing that pops out. Like there's not something new for me to learn because sometimes some of the stories, it's just like one lesson, right? Um, so if I'm going to read it three times, I'm going to go a little deeper with my pondering every single time. And each time I read it again, I'm like, okay, if this is the takeaway, what does that look like in my life? Okay, last time I thought about how it looked like this. Okay, how can I take that to the next level? What can I do to improve? And then I read it a third time. Okay, I've already thought about this <laughs> concept a lot. How can I do even more? Are there other scriptures or resources that support it, right? So like diving deeper into a concept every time, even if it doesn't mean adding other resources, but just sitting there and thinking, what does this really look like? <laughs> how can I get 
even better? How can I take this to the next level? Or how can I teach my children or the kids in my Sunday school class or whatever it is, whoever you have stewardship over, how can I be a better teacher of this concept as well? Um, teaching a lesson is one of the best ways to learn a topic, right? <laughs> of every talk you've given, you're like, I learn more than everyone else. And lessons that we give, I learn more than my class. It's absolutely true. So if you want to learn a concept better, try teaching it, even if, it's to an, even if it's to an imaginary group of people in your head. It cements it really well, and I love that. Okay, let's talk about now what's actually in the scriptures for this week. Let's start with our two chapters in Matthew. Matthew chapter 11, where we left off last week, Jesus had just given the power and authority to all his apostles, right? And sent them forth and perform your own miracles and preach the gospel, right? So now we're coming back. Um, John the Baptist is sending his disciples to Jesus. So John, we know, had lots of disciples, a lot of people. He was very popular. John the Baptist was very popular. That comes up many times in the New Testament, so make sure you know that. A lot of people loved John the Baptist. And he's sending his disciples to Jesus, saying, go listen to Jesus. And Jesus teaches those disciples. But the interesting thing is, is that Jesus then, he talks about his own divinity, but he also talks about John the Baptist. And he says that John is more than a prophet, more than a prophet. John's role, even though we don't have much about him in the scriptures, to be honest, John's role is clearly absolutely essential for Jesus being able to come and perform his role, which I love. Um, you'll also notice because it's Matthew, he's referring to Old Testament prophets a lot. He refers to some prophecies about John the Baptist. They're not all prophecies about Jesus as the Messiah, right? There are prophecies from Malachi and Isaiah about John the Baptist and his role. So I just love that. Jesus is like building up John the Baptist as well and, and telling people that John's the real deal. Um, and of course, Jesus, he, John's pointing everyone back to Jesus. I just love, there's so many lessons I think we can learn from that as well. Um... Jesus is then teaching um, a multitude. He's rebuking some cities for sins that they're committing. And he invites everyone to come unto him and he will give us rest. Beautiful, famous teachings, right? I love that we get to study that in Matthew chapter 11 this week. So make that a focus of your study because that is something that's unique here. Um, and again, more references to Old Testament prophets. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 12. In this one, you'll see a reference to an Old Testament prophet of Jonas. And you might be like, mm, who exactly is that? Jonas is just the Greek name of the prophet Jonah, okay? Um, we know the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. And so Jonah is the Hebrew way that you would write the name. And Jonas is the Greek way you'd write the name. So same prophet. Same thing with like Isaiah and Isaiah, right? There's a lot of, um, and Noah as well. Noah and No. Um, there's lots of different minor changes in between a Hebrew way that you'd write it and a Greek way that you'd write it. Basically, the rule of thumb is if it looks kind of like a prophet that you're familiar with, it's probably that prophet. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty safe bet to make. Um, okay, so chapter 12, this starts off with a familiar story that we have studied a couple times already where Jesus and his disciples are picking corn from a field on the Sabbath and the Pharisees are criticizing them and Jesus teaches them, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And then Jesus heals the hand of the man who had a withered hand on the Sabbath as well, kind of driving the point home that Jesus, Jesus can do good on the Sabbath. Jesus quite literally created the Sabbath day. Um, Jesus is then healing other people. He's casting out devils. And as he does this, the Pharisees are then accusing Jesus himself of being a devil. And this is where he gives that famous teaching of, I can't be a devil because I'm casting out devils. A house divided against itself cannot stand, right? I can't be a devil and cast out devils. In fact, this proves who I am. Um, and he also teaches that the wicked people are going to be the ones who are seeking after signs and then invites anyone that if anyone does the will of the father, then they become a part of Jesus's family. We get to self-select in that process, right? All right, and then skipping over to Luke chapter 11. Remember, we're skipping chapter 10. That's just because you'll see chapter 11 aligns with this pretty well, plus chapter 10 fits better in a future chapter. Um, Jesus starts actually by giving a version of the Lord's Prayer, which is, we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's just Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray, right? So he's giving them an example and he's teaching them how to pray. So we start with that uh, and he teaches them that if you ask for anything, God 
is a good gift giver. He will give you the good things that your heart um, desires, but you do need to do the asking part. Um, Jesus then casts out devils. He's accused of being a devil, gives that whole speech again about how he can't be a devil, and talks again about how the wicked are the ones who seek after signs. And then Jesus teaches um, about light, a beautiful little teaching about light. And at the end of chapter 11, we have Jesus eating with some Pharisees. And the Pharisees accuse Jesus of not washing um, prior to his meal. And Jesus just rebukes them and says, listen, you are so concerned with these outer motions and yet you are not clean on the inside. And that's what matters the most. Um, it kind of ends with, with that teaching about calling the, the Pharisees out for their hypocrisy. Okay, that covers it for this week. Hey, if you are reading the One Minute Scripture Study book, I want to include this for you. I've had some requests for this. Um, pages, days 78 through 84. If you want to stay on schedule with us, days 78 through 84 are the seven days that you can read this week to be on schedule with Come Follow Me. So that's, again, if you have the One Minute Scripture Study in the New Testament book, um, if you don't have it, get it. It's great for the rest of the year, plus you can also use it anytime because it's not technically tied to specific dates, but it does fit with the Come Follow Me schedule if you want to read it. Um, so look for that on Amazon if you want your own copy of that as well. Okay, I think for my personal focus question this week, um, I love the famous scriptures in Matthew 11 about coming to Jesus, all ye that are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. So I want to reflect a little bit this week. What are the burdens that I feel like I'm carrying right now? And then how might I be able to look to Jesus more for his rest from the burdens, from his assistance with the burdens. President Nelson's talk in October General Conference covered this beautifully, I think, of what real rest in Jesus is. It's not an absence of our burdens, right? <laughs> That's not the rest that Jesus is talking about. So what does that rest actually look like? When have I felt that in the past? I love that pattern sometimes when I'm having trouble with it in the moment, I think, well, when have I felt that in the future? When have I felt Jesus take away some of the sting or the heaviness of my burdens and helps me carry them. And then I can better apply it to me now, right? How, how can I seek after that help a little bit more? How can I stop thinking that I have to do it all on my own and figure it all out and instead seek after and rely on the Savior and expect and invite the Savior to take my yoke upon himself and allow him to give me his yoke? Um, such a light and easy burden to have to carry, right? Okay, have a great week this week and happy studying.